Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at something that I've been wondering about ever since I first saw the uh, Asus RTX 4070 Ti Tough PCB, which is, are there any power delivery benefits to putting the vCore part of the vCore VRM over here? Because um, the thing is, on high current draw cards like 6900 XTs, 3080s, 3090s, 4080s, 4090s, it's pretty standard practice to put the vCore VRM on both sides of the GPU core because it allows you to push current into the core from two sides, uh, which effectively doubles the cross section of the power plane, reducing the power plane impedance, meaning that your power delivery is going to be slightly more efficient because there's less power losses in the power plane because there's less resistance in it if it's wider. And also there should be some voltage regulation benefits because the VRM doesn't have to compensate for quite so much power plane impedance uh, when uh, regulating the voltage at the actual uh, chip. Now, this is a 4070 Ti, um, so these don't normally have their vCore VRM over here, or, yeah, normally these do not have part of the vCore VRM over here. A typical 4070 Ti would look something like this, where all of your vCore VRM is sort of in this area. Um, and so, yeah, I've been kind of wondering about, like, did, did Asus manage to put a, you know, is there like a vCore power plane on an internal layer that does something like this, and they're pushing the current into the core like that? Or... What we see on the top layer of the PCB is everything that's going on. And and what we do see on the top layer, right, is like here you can sort of see the vCore power plane. And it's not really much of a plane. It turns more into a strip up here, but you get the idea. Anyway, so this this all goes like that. And so if we just look at what we can see on the top layer, the assumption is the current does this, um, which is not efficient um, and not low impedance because... Yeah, like this, this is a lot of distance for admittedly not that much current, which um, which might be why the, it's only like two power stages over here of vCore. I'm not entirely certain that this isn't just a single phase. It could be two phases, but I haven't gone around the, the card checking which like power stages are sharing PWM signals. So um, yeah, don't know how many phases are actually over here. It could be one, could be two. Um, but anyway, so yeah, looking at the top layer, it kind of looks like the current just goes all the way around, uh, which is not great from a power delivery perspective. Um, but, you know, maybe on an internal layer, they are actually pushing the current straight to the core. Now, obviously, I don't have a board layout. Um, if I did, then I wouldn't be able to show it to you. Um, and that would make, but that would make life a lot easier because we could just check: is there a power plane on one of the internal layers that connects this part of the vCore VRM to the core? Uh, but I don't have that. What I do have is a multimeter, and so there's a few measurements that I've taken on this card, and these are the results of those measurements. Now, these are all reference against motherboard ground, as in the ground probe was on motherboard ground instead of GPU ground. The most correct way to take these measurements would have been to measure the voltage across this capacitor. Measure the voltage across like here. I probably also would have wanted to measure there, uh, here. I mean, I took this one because it's convenient, right? Like the thing is, I have the card in a horizontal test bench. So like getting the probe at this pad right here without shorting this one, it's not impossible, but it's difficult. It's, it's, you know, like less convenient than just probing over here. Um, similar situation over here. It's like, yeah, technically I would kind of want to know what voltage is over here or here. Well, actually this one would have been easy. I'm not sure why I didn't take it, but anyway. Um, yeah, and then like measure across this capacitor, right? So that would have been the most correct way to, to take this kind of measurement because when you're pushing a lot of current, right? Like you'll have hundreds of amps going into the core, um, like that, <laughs> which is why the voltage is so high over here. Um, but all of that current then also has to go back to the uh, power stages that it came from, right? Um, so uh, you can't just, like, choose a random ground location on the card and then reference everything against... Well, I mean, you can, but it's going to throw off your measurements a bit. And I'm, I'm using a, you know, like, motherboard ground for my ground reference, which is just like, yeah, that's... It's not great because that, that obviously doesn't account for the voltage drop in the power... in the ground plane... Uh, from the return current to the VRM. Um, so basically, these voltage measurements are a little bit on the high side, or maybe even a lot on the high side. I'm actually not sure how much of a difference in, in ground voltage there is between the motherboard and the GPU, but uh, we're not going to worry about that too much, because uh, like these are all, all against the same reference point. So um, that shouldn't affect this too much, 
or, well, the effect should be negated by the fact that I'm always using the same reference point to some extent. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so not the best way of taking this measurement if you want peak accuracy, but if we just wanted to figure out, like, is there more resistance from, like, this area to here than this area to here? I think the answer is pretty clear. Yeah, there is. Um, because this is sitting at 1.7, like, the, the highest voltage I measured over here, because the thing is the card load cycles, right? So I basically sat there with the, the probe on the capacitor, and I waited for the load cycle of 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme to go through, and I recorded the highest voltage that I saw during the, the like, Time Spy Extreme uh, graphics test 2 loop. Um, and anyway, so yeah, this is sitting like 20 millivolts above what we're getting over here, and then uh, above here, and like 17 millivolts above what we have uh, right at the core. But, you know, that, that's expected that this wouldn't be at the exact same voltage as at the core, because like there's, there's, there's resistance. A lot of it, right? When you're pushing hundreds of amps of current, like, PCBs uh, don't, like, you lose a lot of voltage on the way, right? That's, that's just expected. But yeah, from over here, there's, like, more voltage drop than anywhere else on the power plane. So I would say that what we're seeing on the top layers of this PCB... Also, you can even see the same thing kind of going on on the back, right? There's this split in the uh, copper over here, and then that just goes up and over, and then joins back together with uh, the V-Core power plane in this area. Um, right? So if, if we so it looks like, like, based on these voltage measurements... What we see on the top layers of the PC, well, like top and bottom layers of the PCB for the V-Core power plane, does seem to actually be all that's going on. The current is going all the way around. Um, so then, why would Asus put the V-Core VRM over here if it's not, you know, or part of the V-Core VRM over here if it's not efficient uh, to do that from a, like a power delivery perspective? Because because it isn't. Like we're literally losing more voltage between this part of the VRM and the core than anywhere else. Um, and the, the only reason I can think of is heatsink compatibility. Uh, they probably wanted to recycle, like, a 4080 heatsink design, and 4080s are actually designed to have current going into the core from two sides. So if you're gonna, you know, reuse a 4080 heatsink, well, you're gonna have to lay out, on a 4070 Ti, you're gonna have to lay out your 4070 Ti like it's a 4080. Um, so yeah, putting the V-Core VRM, like, doing the sort of typical 4070 Ti layout of the sort of, like, L-shaped V-Core over here, this wasn't really, really an option if they were reusing, uh, if they wanted to reuse a 4080 heatsink. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of that. Um, also, uh, I'm not really surprised that they didn't manage to put a V-Core power plane, like, under the memory chips, because as far as I know, with GP, uh, with, I, and I'm pretty sure this is all GPUs at this point, this area of the PCV is actually controlled by NVIDIA. Um, you do not get to change the PCB layout in this area. As far as I know, the main reasoning for that is NVIDIA basically wants to make sure that all the GPUs have the same memory topology, so that there isn't, like, issues with, uh, with signaling, because somebody decided to do something weird with their memory layout. Um, which is really important for something like GDD, like for the high-speed GDDR that you have on GPUs, right? Like, um, yeah. So I'm not particularly like I'm not really surprised that Asus didn't manage to, you know, get a V-Core power plane under the memory chips because if Nvidia didn't design this part of the PCB to have a V-Core power plane going under the memory chips, then there's not going to be a V-Core power plane in going under the the under the memory chips. Uh, the other thing is that the chip itself is probably designed to take all of the current in, like, all of the V-Core from, like, sort of this area. Maybe even this area, because technically I don't think there'd be too much of a problem if you just put a V-Core power plane directly under the PCIe lanes. Um, right? Because, like, yeah, we have PCIe over here, but that, like, it shouldn't be too much of a problem to just shove V-Core under that. Um, then again, you might also have, like, display signals running through this area, so I'm, I'm not sure. Um... But, yeah, like, with the with a standard 4070 Ti layout where you'd have that L shape, right, you'd want all of your V-Core connections in this area because that's the shortest distance. Um, so, yeah. But I don't have a pinout for the, the chip either, so that's that's also extreme, like, that's that's just speculation on my part, but 
yeah, I would be really, really surprised if there was any V core connections like in this area or this area or like, yeah, like this area of the substrate. I would be very surprised if there's any V core connections. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that's, that's kind of it for this video. It's just something I've been wondering about ever since I saw this PCB because, uh, like on on some cards, this is actually done for like power delivery reasons, but here it's it's heatsink compatibility is the only reason I can think of that they they wanted well, that Asus decided to do this because um, based on the measurements, there's more resistance over here to like from here to here. There's more resistance than basically anywhere else on the power plane, so that that's not really like from a power delivery power delivery perspective. Yeah, this isn't isn't really helping anything. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's it for the video. Um, the PCB pictures are from Tech Power Up, so I'll link uh, their website down down in the description. They, they're a really great source for high-res uh, GPU PCB pictures. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a Bandcamp. Uh, there's links to all of that down in the description. So if you check them out, that would be much appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and goodbye.